Hi guys, in this video we're going to be installing a Moodle application with the database in the background being PostgreSQL. Um, what is Moodle? Moodle is an e-learning uh, management tool or platform that you can install on your own server and then uh, provide e-learning content in any form uh, to your people, be it company or school or university. Actually, a lot of schools, at least in Germany, uh, use, especially in the, these days now with the COVID, uh, are using Moodle to um, enable uh, e-learning. But I know as well, way before COVID, that a lot of universities are using or have been using Moodle to manage their whole e-learning content and grades and certificates and what have you. So in this regard, this software is very useful and it's very flexible. And uh, it, it, in addition to the, to, the, to the base software, you also have a lot of plugins that you can extend your software with. And the best thing about it, it's open source. It is free to download. So basically open source means that you can, you don't owe anybody any rights or any uh, fees and you can modify the software as much as you want. Um, what you do need is a sort of a server, sort of an internet server, or what we're doing in our case is we're using a local host server and what I'm using is software called Zap. And that software, which is here, with that software, if you download it on your local machine, you can basically simulate uh, an Apache server. And uh, that would serve or would enable you to run web applications. And this way you can install Moodle on your you know, local machine and have it work as if it's on a web, web uh, or, you know, it's like on a web server. Uh, actually, we're going to be installing our Moodle here on a local uh, server with XAMPP. I've got XAMPP installed. And uh, it's basically, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you've got an Apache server or, um, or a, a Windows server, or basically a 2SI um, two server, uh, it doesn't matter. It's the same, it's the same, um, it's the same procedure regarding Moodle installation and all of that. Uh, the thing is, if you have a real server like Apache or a Windows server, um, you have to make sure that you have uh, PHP installed because Moodle needs PHP, the PHP language. And standard, standard uh, one way of, of, of uh, and the database, obviously, because on, low, on, on XAMPP, in XAMPP, you not only have Apache, but you also have the database. So if you're doing, if you're installing Moodle on your uh, local host, uh, you don't need a separate database because you have MariaDB, which is a sort of a variant of MySQL. It's a sort of a uh, uh, sort of a fork from uh, MySQL and PHP. These are the three things that XAMPP uh, um, uh, uh, offers. What uh, what Moodle requires is PHP because it's programmed in PHP and a database. Now you could use um, MariaDB found in XAMPP. However, in today's exercise, and by the way, I have done an earlier video uh, showing you how to install Moodle with MariaDB. I'm gonna post the link in the description below. But if you want, or if you have uh, a PostgreSQL database and you wish to install Moodle and have it interact with that PostgreSQL database, then this video today is for you. So that's to XAMPP. And uh, Postgres SQL is basically an open source database management system. Very similar to MySQL, you know, it's, it's a database engine. Obviously, it's got differences and it's also open source, a uh, pretty robust database. Um, and uh, if you haven't got it, you can download it from here. I'm going to post all these links, Zam, Postgres. I'm going to post them all in the, um, in the description below. You can download Postgres and install it. And um, 
what you then have, Postgres is basically a sort of a, a sort of a database system, a, a database server, if you wish. And once you start it up, uh, you will get so, something like that, sort of a, a, a browser interface to that database. And you see here, I've got like multiple databases here and stuff like that. And we're going to be working with that. And here, obviously, are multiple servers that I've got installed with time. You know, I started off with 10, 11, and now I'm 12. And uh, I think 13 is now the newest version, which is out, which is, I think, recently, uh, last year, and the last year got out, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So that's sort of the environment we have. So we have exam, which is basically installing that Moodle on a local host. And I have Postgres installed. And now I've got Moodle. So the first step is we, gotta, we need to download Moodle. And I just go over here and, you know, just get the latest release. And you see here, here the uh, once you have Moodle installed and you need some certain uh, plugins, then you can get them from here. I mean, one 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 plugin that I know, uh, one organization that I'm working with is using it is Custom Cert for you to be able to do custom certificates. So there are gazillions of 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 uh, of, uh, of Moodle plugins you can use. So you know, you know, just uh, go to town. You know, <laughs> if you need them. Anyways, uh, to get the latest release, I just go here. And then I can download it in the format I wish, either as a, a tor or a zip. I, I download it as a, as a zip, and then uh, we take it from there. So after extracting um, that zip that we downloaded from from Moodle, and I place it in uh, in Zamp, you have a certain folder which you can specify, which is basically your public folder. I.e., that's the folder where um, you know which 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 contains all the web applications that you wish to serve uh, via the the web or via the internet, and in this in this case mine is called public, and in it I have uh, down I've placed uh, the Moodle um, the folder which I got after extracting that, and I renamed it to my learn. I just renamed the folder to my learn, and that's the content of that folder. So basically, what you do you extract that zip. Uh, file and what you get is a folder called Moodle. You can name that folder whatever you want, and then uh, you place it in your public uh, folder. And now to, the way to access that is basically if I go over here to my browser and go localhost, localhost, because I'm using XAMPP, remember, and I go and say uh, my learn, then I should come across the installer of Moodle. There you go. Now I can start installing Moodle. But hold on a minute. First of all, we have to um, sort out the database. We have to create a database for, for, for that Moodle. And that's where we go into uh, Postgres. And what I need is I need to create a, a new database. And first of all, let me create an extra user for that database. So I just go in here and create a new login. And let's call it my learn my learn user and I'm gonna give him a password of ABC and privileges he's gonna know I don't need to save anything so I just put it all on yes and save so now we have created an extra user for uh, our database and now I need to create that, that, that database because Moodle before installing Moodle you need to have that database ready so create database and I'm gonna call it my learn and the owner is uh, my learn user and save so now I have fixed everything and uh, the thing is saving and it's creating that database and once it's done we can start installing Moodle so a database is now created and if I go in there there it is and if I go to tables there are no tables at all in there right so now we're ready to install Moodle so I go back to my installer here and I just pick the language and say next and now It'll ask you, uh, you know, address and so on. So the web address in our case is localhost mylearn. 
Moodle directory, which is ePublic. Now, another thing which I got to do, I have to create a specific directory outside the public directory because Moodle needs that as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my file system. So I just created this folder called my learn data and it's found here it is somewhere in, in, anywhere outside of that public folder. So I just copy that path and go back to my installer and paste that path. And remember, you have to escape each of these backslashes. So there we have it. So the main folder of Moodle is in the public, in the public folder of the of the of the server. In this case, it is uh, underscore underscore public, and um, there's another folder, data directory, which has to be placed outside of that um, public folder. It's all, it's all described here as well. And so once I got that set up, oh sorry, I have to. It's the wrong name. It's called my learn. Did I did I copy it right? because I specifically called it my learn data. Yeah, that's it. It's gonna be this, this, this one. That's what I thought. I just copied the wrong path. Let me go back in here. Right. So now let me again escape, uh, let me escape the backslashes by adding another backslash everywhere. So, So there you go. So the path is uh, here, and that's that's basically the folder that Moodle requires outside of that public folder. Right. So now we're ready to go to next. And now I've got to pick the database, and what I'm going to do is pick Postgres, go to next, and now we've got to put in some parameters for the database. So database is localhost. Database name is uh, my learn. Database user is we had it fixed my learn underscore user. Password is ABC. Now you could prefix all your tables. Oh, ABC. Now you can prefix all your tables with a certain with with, with something. Uh, let me call it. Uh, mill for my learn underscore and now the database port now how do I find the database port well if you go back to Postgres and go to my um, server over here and just go to properties and uh, connection and there it is that's a port so I just copy that port go back to my installer in here and so I got everything so database host is local host because my database, that Postgres is also on localhost. That's also localhost 127.001. And um, database name is MyLearn, which is right. That's what it's called. And if you look, um, hold on a second. Yeah, uh, just let me close that. Cancel. Yeah. And uh, if I go to MyLearn and see the properties of that, it belongs to my learn user and we set up my learn user with the password abc right so uh let's go in here localhost my learn user abc i'm prefixing all my tables with the uh, myl for my learn and the port the uh, database port we just saw that and now next so now i've got here something which i just can confirm i just can continue So I'm mean, now in the final page before actual installation. And now here you have some server checks. As long as you have got nothing read, all is good. Now I've got here some warnings here, uh, something with the PHP setting. And down here I've got something like, uh, oh yeah, my site is not HTTPS. Obviously I'm using localhost and my PHP is not 64 bit. Well, as long as I've got nothing read, if you have something read in here, you can't install Moodle. So you have to make sure that all of that is green. If you've got some orange bits like here, some warnings, that's okay. And you see here, your server environment meets all minimum requirements and now I can continue. And now actual installation starts and that can take a while. And after that, now that can take a while. And after that, Moodle will be installed uh, on your local host or in my local host. 
So now the installation is done, and you see during the installation you'd have you start off with an empty page. This page is empty, and then with time it just uh, you know fills all that stuff automatically. And um, uh, we've got here something. Okay, so and then it fills all that stuff automatically. And right at the bottom, then you reach the bottom, then it says continue. So basically now the installation is done. And now we move on and basically uh, have to um, set up the, you know, administrator for the Moodle. And so there you are. And now what we do is like we set up the admin. Let's call him admin. Let's give him a password. I'm going to give him a just a simple password, A, B, C, one, two, three, because Moodle requires, as you see here, Moodle requires digits and special characters and so on. What I do is like, just do A, B, C, one, two, three, you know, three exclamations and D, E, F. This way, I don't have to remember anything. And um, the first name admin, or let's call him, let's call him my learn, my learner, my learn admin. And um, yeah, let's call him Eddie. And email address is eb at mylearn.com. Obviously, it doesn't exist. And uh, so that's it. And just select the country. Um, of course, G for Germany. There we go. And uh, optional, I just need to set up my language. Uh, I'd like to set up my language. Did I miss that? Somewhere you can set up your language to English. Uh, well, it doesn't matter here because uh, in order to have further languages in uh, Moodle, um, you need to install those plugins, uh, those additional languages. So that's it. So let me update that profile. And now, I am in Moodle and that is basically relying on a Postgres database in the background, the MyLearn database. And while that's creating the admin, let's go over here and check out the MyLearn. Now the tables were empty. Now let me refresh that. And now you have here um, a whole load of tables and you see all of them have the prefix MYL as we specified and these are all the tables that are in every Moodle installation um, and obviously you can access the data from this database without having to you know go through Moodle itself and obviously here I've got to put the you know set up the site so let me call it my learn and my learn and yeah let me just do it so and then i should be in the application itself and then you can you can, you can do stuff and oh okay um let me just call no reply at example or mylearn.com i don't know if my learn exists uh, i mean i never heard of the name before so you know it's a fictitious name in this video and if this company or, or my learn in any way exists, then, uh, you know, wasn't on purpose. Uh, and I have no affiliation with them in any, in any way. So there we go. Now we have, we are in Moodle itself. And now basically you can do site administration. You can add content or your other content managers can add content. So basically you have it now installed. Now, the way I installed it here on my local host, it is identical. If you install it, you know, on a, on a real server on a real life server, it is, uh, regarding Moodle, it's an identical process. You have to put your directory, the main directory, in the uh, public folder. You have to have a second directory somewhere else outside the public folder. You have to set up the database before you install, and then you install. And the only difference is, obviously, when you have a real server, you don't have local host over here, but you have a sort of, a, you know, a, an IP number or a, or a URL, and that's that's the whole thing. Yeah, and that's that's the, basically the installation is uh, straightforward as long as you know what Moodle requires and what Moodle needs before you start installing.